Wait, are you actually down to bet a thousand dollars on this? A thousand? Yeah, a thousand. Uh, I don't know about that. It's a lot. Okay, 500? All right, no, fine. A thousand, we'll do a thousand. So I recently got into a Twitter argument with fellow game developer Bargy. And what better way to settle these things than with violence? Okay, maybe there's a better solution. Hey, are you busy today? Uh, no, not really. Why? Okay, good. <laughs> Click this link. Oh god, okay. One bullet. What, what does this mean? Okay, that's our theme. Best Python game wins $1,000. We have 10 hours. Wait, what? Go. One bullet. The first thing that comes to my mind are the late game levels from Astro Barrier on Club Penguin. You have a very limited number of bullets that you need to use both cleverly and precisely. So I think I'm going to expand on that idea and make a puzzle shooter game. You get one bullet per level with the objective of taking out all the enemies. And I'll probably have things like walls that bounce your bullet back to you. Kind of a big undertaking for 10 hours, but I think I can pull it off if I just focus on a few basic mechanics that I can make a handful of levels with. So here's a bullet. It's actually just a square that moves up. Let's put the bullet in its own class. Now we can make a shooter that creates new bullets at its position when a key is pressed. And then let's make the shooter move left and right with the arrow keys. Let's see the game. All right, basically, you can move with the arrow keys, and then when you press space, you shoot bullets. And then, like, the oh, bullets are going to bounce back, and then you can collect them. You know what it reminds me of? What? Uh, look, in the, look in the Discord. All right. All right. Wait, dude. Where's your game anyway? My game? Dude, I'm in the car right now. You said corn snakes, right? Oh, I get it. Nice one, dude. Like corn snakes because Python can also mean a snake. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, I was I was joking, yeah. Uh, yeah, okay, so how's your game doing? Um, you know what? Uh, I just, uh, I realized, um, yeah, I, I have to go. What? Well, guess I won't be needing this anymore. All right, so as it turns out, apparently Python is a programming language. I loaded up the Pygame docs, which I must say are the ugliest docs I've ever seen. But after putting on my green light filter glasses, I managed to get a window rendering on the screen. Nothing in the window though. So my idea is to have a character who can only move using recoil. They have a shotgun that propels them in the opposite direction to the direction that they shoot. Easy enough, right? Well, they'll only have a single bullet. So each time they shoot, they'll have to aim towards a bullet pickup, else they will die making it a whole lot harder. This wouldn't be difficult enough on its own though, so I'm gonna add falling obstacles from the sky that you'll have to dodge. I got to work on rendering sprites of the screen. I made a placeholder in Illustrator. It may not look like much, but with the back end stuff, this square is pretty much ready to be moved, scaled and rotated at will, such as this gravity I implemented. So it's probably time to move on to the game art. So I made some art for the shooter, which is now a slingshot, and the bullet, which is now a rock. Here's how it looks in game, but I'm pretty sure our theme is one bullet, not 267,258,243,459 bullets. So now you just have one rock, and if it goes off screen, the game resets. I think it's time for some enemies. So let's kill two birds with one stone and make a level loading system that adds new enemies to a list based on the current level, and then a win state that loads the next level once all the enemies have been removed from the list, which happens on collision with the projectile. And there we go, now we can kill two birds with one stone. I got to work on a shotgun sprite in Illustrator inspired by Kurt's Gazak. I was super proud of this until I imported it into the engine and um, why, why is it so ugly? Realizing I was making very slow progress, I decided to leave it for the time being and deem it good enough. Next, I got to work on the player in Illustrator, imported it into my game, and gave it these creepy eyes that follow the cursor. I experimented with a couple colors until I found the combination that looked the best. After a couple of hours rest, I got back and started to work on the player movement. It basically works by finding the vector between the player's current position and the cursor position, and then multiplying the entire thing by negative one. It then zeroes the player's velocity and adds the vector from before to it. This gave a super nice feeling result, so I moved on. Next, I got to work on creating a system for rendering lots of sprites to the screen at once. I intended to use this for the falling obstacle spawning, so I shelved it for later as there was still a couple of things left to do. 
have you ever been in a situation where you're doing a $1,000 game dev competition with your friend, he sends you an IP logger, then DDoSes your web connection, which prevents you from accessing Stack Overflow? Probably, right? Well, worry no more. You can protect yourself from internet criminals with Surfshark VPN. Or maybe you've Googled a bunch of Python coding questions only to get an ad for a baby ball Python on sale for $99? Kinda creepy, but with Surfshark, you can stop websites from tracking your info and selling targeted ads to you. Did someone break into your email and change your Twitter profile picture to the young version of Mr. O'Hare from the Lorax to mock your questionable curtain hairstyle? Well, not anymore. With Surfshark's alert ID protection, you'll get an alert when someone tries to log into your email. But best of all, how many times does your weird British friend flex on you with his UK exclusive Netflix sitcoms? Well, zero if you're using Surfshark. It allows you to watch region lock content not available in your area. So if you want both protection and freedom online, click the link in the description and use code POLYMARS for both 83% off and 3 months of completely free service. Surfshark offers a 30 day money back guarantee, so there's no risk to try it out for yourself. Thanks so much to Surfshark, because if I don't win this competition, this video will probably be very expensive. Time to add a new mechanic to our bird murdering simulator. The box. I modeled it after this electricity box thing. I don't really know what it does though. Oh. Anyway, it reflects the rock back towards you, letting you pick it up again with your slingshot, which I think will make for some interesting puzzles. The last thing I want to do is cure these paralytic birds by giving them the ability to move. So I made left facing and right facing sprites, which are... kinda cursed. Anyways, when creating a bird, you can now set it to be moving and specify its speed, starting direction, and distance. Oh, also, I made them look more like actual birds, using real life for reference. It's just over the halfway mark now and I was getting more confident I'd be able to finish in time. I started to work on the bullet power up which would replace the player's shotgun shell. This was pretty easy to implement, once the player shoots, negate a bullet, and when they hit a power up, add a bullet and regenerate the power up. I then added some UI to tell you how many bullets you had left, and that's kind of the finished game. Of course we still had the falling obstacles to add, but just to be safe, I decided to add a game loop first. So I added a main menu and a restart sequence if you go below the screen. Soon after though, I added in the falling enemies, and all that was left to do was polish. So I tried to start coming up with levels, got distracted and added some grass, and now I'm thinking I still don't have enough mechanics to actually make good levels. So I'm gonna add one more obstacle. An electric shock that travels along the power cables and destroys your rock on collision. Just gotta steal some movement code from the bird, write an if statement, and there we go. Now let's make some levels. Bro, nobody wants to watch a time lapse, can we just please move on? The final thing left to do to my game was add polish. So I started by creating a particle system and rendering an explosion effect at the end of the gun when they shoot. Then I added the high score, which is just stored in the CSV file in the game directory. Probably not the most secure of things, but uh, oh well, it was literally 2am. Finally, I added in sound effects and music, and the game was done. Alright, I'm actually in a pretty good position with 10 finished levels and an hour to spare. So I'm gonna add some UI to show how many shots you've taken and what level you're on. Here it is in action, and to finish things up I added a title and end screen and a splash screen. Wait, why doesn't it say Polymars on the splash screen? Well, surprise! Mrs. is, is, is our special guest expert special guest expert game developer judge, is going to be raiding our games. He won't know whose game is whose, and he also won't know about our tiny little bet. That seems like it would be a pretty heavy burden to place on his decision. Check out his channel, he makes awesome videos, and has a challenge series that you'll probably like if you enjoy this video. Anyway, we're done with the game with 10 minutes left. Wait, sound effects. Okay, I think we're actually done now. Do you want to see my game? Uh, yeah, send it in the chat. Okay, I'll send it over now. Okay. Dude, what the hell? Okay, thank god this is your actual <laughs> game. Bro, who is cutie girl game? <laughs> Dude, no, no, that's, that, that's, that's... <laughs> So the bullets you can collect. 
Bro, you're trash at this. You're literally trash at this. Right. The bullet should be pretty spot on with the hitboxes, but- Wait, what happened to your game? <laughs> Wait. It just crashed. Wait. All right, I'm, I'm gonna send you my PayPal, dude. I'm so good at this game. It's unbelievable. Dude, you're popping off right now. Bro, oh my God, how am I so good at this? Oh my god. You got this. Oh my god, bro. What <laughs> what type of game are you having me play? All right, enough of our shenanigans. I think it's time for our special guest, expert special to game developer, Judge. Hey, what's up? I'm Mrs. I make horror games and YouTube videos, and now I'm going to be playing these games by um, Polymars and who else? Bargy. This is two birds, one stone. Okay, line up and hit. Okay. Do I have one shot per level? Okay. Oh, okay. I like how I don't even need like tutorials. Uh, and then I have to hit these two. Okay. And now I have to start over. Okay, that's kind of annoying. I kind of wish everything moved faster. Except the birds. And I, okay, now I get to start over again. <laughs> okay. There we go. Okay. Uh, what? So I don't want to hit that, okay. I don't understand the logic behind these graphics, to be honest. Okay. Oh, okay, that was cool. I liked that. That was fun. This is good. Oh, come on. Okay, so they have giant hitboxes. Come on, you make your hitboxes forgiving. Wait, and then shoot. Okay, so just... Government destroyed <laughs> shots for you. Okay, I like the mechanics. There's definitely a lot of jank in the, the movement and the hitbox sizing. Should always err on the side of making hitboxes extremely forgiving for the player, I think. But I like the I like the puzzle designs and the base mechanics a lot. Okay, so I fall. Okay, and when I shoot, I move. And I have limited oh and I can't clip off screen. Okay. Wish everything went full screen. Oh now I'm dead. Okay. And I can't hit any of the objects. Oh, oh, I do go off screen though. And every time, okay. Good draft. Whoops. Come on. Oh no. Yeah, I can't click off screen here, so it's very easy to get stuck. Oh. Yep. Just hit it again. Is it? Is this a pie game thing where it's like hard to? Make hitboxes work. Okay, um, I, I like, I think the mechanics cool. I don't think it really works as a like endless survival mode. I think this would be funner if it was more like a platformer where you had specific pre-built levels and like defined obstacles to um, overcome. I like the movement, or the, yeah, the movement system with the gun and collecting bullets to get through obstacles, but it doesn't really work on a small screen like this because it's so easy to click off. And like, if I get to the side here, I can't really do anything. I'm like kind of stuck if I end up over here. And then again, the hitboxes are an issue. But I, I mean, I like the base mechanic system of shooting the move. That's pretty fun. After Mizzizizis sent over his gameplay, I asked him to tell us his favorite. And when he sent his response, I waited to open it with Bargy. All right. <laughs> the sling oh! Oh! Let's go! <laughs> Okay, Bargy told me he sent the money. I just want to quickly verify it. Oh shoot, a thousand dollars in my balance. Let's go. Wait. Rematch? Wait, what do you mean by rematch? I'm just proposing, you know, a, li a little rematch. But this time, instead of using the puny Python programming language, we do it in C++. You think you could beat me if you used C++? Are, are you joking or something? You're terrible. All of your games have memory leaks. 